All right, hello there. It's uh, Wrench Gear here again from Wrench Gear's Adventures. I'd like to do just a little a uh, five-minute video or so on uh, <clears throat> on how to start a push lawnmower. Now this might sound uh, pretty uh, pretty basic to a lot of people, and certainly older folks and and whatever that have been doing this for years and years. But <clears throat> we had an occasion uh, this summer where uh, we were gone on holidays. And my youngest daughter was at home, um, going to work and all that. And she called me up one day and she says, Hey dad, uh, you know, the lawn's getting kind of long and, uh, I want to cut it before you guys come home, but I don't know how to get the, 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 the push lawnmower going. So I thought, uh, so I explained it to her over the phone and everything was cool and she got it going and she cut the lawn and that's all great. But I thought, eh, I wonder how many other uh people are you know new to this or whatever so i thought ah, i'm going to give it a little shot and see if we can help anybody out so this is your basic push lawn more well may i guess maybe it's a little bit more basic but uh what we have here is this is a uh, a front propelled one and we have this here handle wait a minute wrong see i already don't know what i'm doing uh for the for the front propulsion so it's a front wheel drive just these Two front wheels are pulling along and we have a lever here for to engage them so when it's running uh, you know and you want to go forward you can push it like a regular lawnmower although it does seem a little bit heavier because you have to push the gears what are inside those wheels or in that whole mechanism there but to get it going uh, when it when the motors running you grab this here and you just flip it forward and they will start to spin and they will pull you along and it's very easy to go um, to shut that system off um, you have to have this handle down all the time to keep the engine running so to shut the front propulsion off um, you can just let this thing go halfway and it will stop those wheels from pulling you along so a lot of lawnmowers don't have that so I thought I'll start off with that on this one so you may or may not have that whatever um, so anyway but most all lawnmowers have this now, which, uh, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, they didn't have them. They didn't have this lever. What this lever does is it keeps the lawnmower motor running. Um, so it has to be down for it to run. You have to hold it down while you're starting it, pulling the pull cord here, wherever it is. <clears throat> and you, uh, you have to leave this down. When you want to shut this, this lawnmower off, you let that up. And it shuts it off. Now what happens is this is connected to this cable here. And when you pull down on the handle, it pulls that cable. That cable is going all the way down and around and it's coming right to here. So I'm going to operate the handle up here and you'll see that moving. So that moves. And what it's doing is it's pulling that lever, pulling this lever. And, uh, and inside here... Uh, on the top of the motor is a big disc called the flywheel and it's spinning around and round and round and round as it's running when you let the handle go and it moves that lever there's like a brake band that is around that flywheel and when you let go of the handle that brake band clamps on wraps around that flywheel and it stops the engine um, and the reason they put that on, that's a, a safety thing, was because um, people, would be, uh, people would be getting their, their feet and their hands stuck underneath here for various different reasons with the thing running. And before you know it, you're losing toes and you're use, losing fingertips and stuff. You know, a lot of times, you know, people would go in here and they were trying to clean stuff out. Or they'd flip it over on its side, and they'd be, they'd flip the whole thing over on its side like this. Uh, if I can do it, this thing's kind of heavy. Ugh. And they'd be cleaning out the grass clippings underneath there. When you do that, you're supposed to pull the spark plug wire off here. You're supposed to pull that spark plug wire off so that the thing won't accidentally start on you if you are pulling the moving the the cutting blade around underneath to clean all of the grass out of there but you know uh people 
are too fast and not thinking and they never remove that spark plug wire and they spin the blade underneath and all of a sudden the thing starts on them and it cuts their fingers off. So they've put this brake on the flywheel um, so that if you spin the fly, if you try and spin the, uh, the 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 blade around underneath, it's uh, it's heavy and hard, and you can barely spin it. It's supposed to hold it tight, and it won't start accidentally. Um, there's also a, a a time limit on um, when you let this thing go. The originally they came out and they said, when you let that go, that blade is supposed to stop in one second or. One and a half seconds or some stupid thing that came out with that originally there was a time time limit on it that it had to happen in that amount of time i don't know what it is but um anyway that's what that's all about keep you from cutting your leg uh, cutting cutting your legs off cutting your your feet off or cutting your fingers off or whatever so anyway so we've gone through that um most lawnmowers of this type of thing right here let's see if i can get on this here right here we'll have a primer bulb there a little rubber thing a little rubber cup inverted cup that is a black one or maybe a red one and you push that a couple of times and it it uh, it helps it start by pushing gas into the carburetor and into the engine to get it to start initially sometimes they're on the front sometimes they're on the side this one doesn't have one because it's supposed to be some kind of a special, I don't know, thing starts by itself, business, whatever. Our starting promise, whatever. Anyway, it doesn't have one. It doesn't need one, apparently. This thing does start good, usually two or three pulls. But a lot of times on the primer bulb, it will have a little thing along here that will say, push it three times. One, two, three, and then you try and start it. And it's supposed to start. A lot of times it doesn't start on the third time on the third push so uh, you know on my on my snowblower for instance it says push it three times I usually have to push the thing like five or six times so you may need to go and you know push 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 and then try and start it watch that you don't push the thing too many times because you can flood the engine and then you're gonna have a really tough uh, flood the engine with gas and then you have a really tough time getting it started because the spark plug inside the cylinder gets all wet and whatever else so anyway push it three or four times maybe five times and see how it goes um, so what you want to do here as well is before we get going too far on it we want to check the gas and we want to check the oil so oil is very important important one to uh, to make sure that this thing has enough oil in it and it's not going to seize so we're going to pull the oil dipstick out and they're you know in different configurations in different spots on different uh, on different lawnmowers and different small engines but uh, find it and come out with it so we're gonna wipe it all off wiping it all off here with a rag we need a rag so this here says um, okay is it upside down or right side up here it says I don't know if you can read it in the Sun here it there's a little gauge on a little area on here says add and full and there's arrows between you want it to be between these these two dots these two these two holes that are punched in the end of this thing so to check this properly you push it all you put it all the way in and you turn it until it's seated properly some of them screw in some of them just push in but put it all the way in and then bring it back out and then we're gonna we're gonna take a reading on it and see how much it's got. So this thing here is well, actually it's it's over full. So maybe we're sitting on a bit of a hill. It shouldn't be over full. It should be right in between those two. We're gonna check it again. And you know what? Yeah, it's over full. So anyway, I'm gonna be changing it later today because uh, I'm winterizing this thing today for putting it away for the winter. So I'll be changing that oil and adjusting it anyway, but um, yeah, it shouldn't be over full. It should be right on. So just to know that if it's low, you got to get some in there. This one's too much. Oh, whatever. Um, too much is better than not enough. Let's put it that way. 
So we're also going to check the uh, the gas on this thing. So we're going to pull the cap off. Again, things are in different places on different motors, but anyway, it's down in there. There's some in here, not very much. So we're going to put some in there. So what I, so what I like to do is um, I'll put something down like a some cardboard like this out on the grass just in case you spill some uh, sorry about that just in case you spill some gas out of out of the the gas can or whatever that it doesn't get all over the grass if the gas if the gas gets on the grass if the gas is on the grass uh, it'll kill that grass within a day it'll be a big dead spot there so we're gonna funnel it and we're going to take your gas can. We're going to open up the vent first to let off any built up pressure that may be in that can. There was none in here because this was loose a little bit already. And we're going to unscrew this guy. So some of these have, have, a, have a, a spout that bends. Some of them have a rigid spout. A lot of times these ones that bend, they can only bend, you know, 50 times or whatever, and they will begin to crack between all these little grooves in there. And you won't realize it. And as you're trying to pour gas out, and you're expecting it to come out of here, it winds up coming all out of these cracks here, and it's all garbage. So this one's actually in good shape. But um, I find that if you put one of these in, and you and you have this attached to the gas can and you're trying to aim for this thing and you're lifting up the gas can at the same time to try and push this in there you never get it in and it's spraying all over the place and dumping out everywhere especially the rigid ones are much worse than that so a lot of times on these small motors I won't even use this thing I'll go like so and I will go like this and that's again for the cardboard on the grass in case any hooks around and starts dribbling down running down here and drips off and into the grass you don't want that another cautionary note this gas tank on this thing that's only the size of a can of pop in there hardly any any uh any volume to it so it fills up super fast so take it easy when you're doing that put in a little bit and then pull the can off Maybe pull that out, have a look in there, see where it's at. Maybe give it a little bit more and do that a couple of times and um, call it quits. It doesn't need to be full. You can always put in a little bit more later. Um, when you do put more in later, they always caution you not to fill this tank up um, when the motor's really hot, when you've been running it all afternoon um, because it's, it's really hot. And if, if you overflow it and gas runs down here and gets on that hot motor, uh, it will vaporize very instantly and becomes super, super flammable. So, uh, you know, you risk a fire going on there or whatever. So anyway, we're going to dump some in. Don't lay this tank, this can so much on the side that you're going to have gas coming out of here. It can only come out of the front, not out of the back. Or should only come out of the front. So we're going to dump a little bit in. And we're going to look. And it's, it's actually almost full already. And we're going to dump some more. And there it is, it's full, that's all it gets. Because that can, or that tank rather, is so is so small, it fills up instantly. So here you can see that it has been, it's already started to run down here. And it will run all the way down and it will start dripping off the bottom if you keep going and keep going. So that's the purpose of the cardboard, to catch all that so it doesn't kill your grass. And your dad comes home to all these dead spots on the grass after holidays and says, what the heck's that all about? My daughter knew enough to do that. Well, I told her to do it, and she did it. And she said, yeah, it worked out good because she did, did have some spilling back. All right, so we're going to put this here stuff away. And we're going to try and start this thing. So once again, most of them would have a primer bulb there. This one doesn't. So we're going to see how this thing goes. Ugh. And hopefully it starts in the first 
couple pulls. And these are always a good idea. You know, uh, a lot of them now are noise canceling ones. Or you can get them with radios or Bluetooth or whatever you want to do. But you need to wear these things. And all the kids say, oh, it'll never happen to me. It'll never happen to me. But you know what? I said that too when I was your age and a teenager and doing all this stuff. And, uh, you know, nowadays the ringing in my ears is so bad. And everybody thinks it won't happen to them. Believe me, you're no special than anybody else. It's going to happen to you. And you're going to lose your hearing and whatever else. Because the droning that comes out of these machines is just crazy. So put them on and use them. And there you go. So I got them on. And we're going to try and see how this thing starts. And surprise, surprise, it started on the very first pull. That was pretty good because it hasn't been started in about two weeks. So I'm a little surprised at that, but that was good. So I can try to demonstrate here how this uh, how this front drive system here works on this one. And like I said, uh, you may or may not have that on yours. Let's see if I can get this camera set up. Sorry about it. I'm swinging the thing all over the place, probably making you a bit dizzy. Let me try this again here. I get this all in one shot. All right, this is going bad. Don't get dizzy. See if I can do this. So I want to be able to see the handle at the top of the handlebars and you can't see that. And see the front wheels at the same time. Maybe if I could do this and you can try and I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see that thing spinning. But let's give it a try anyway. So you got to pull this baby down to start it. And we have, we have this lever. And when I push it forward, the front wheels should start turning. And there they're turning. And to stop them, I let this handle up halfway and they stopped. And then when you want to go again, push it forward, and they're turning, and to get them to stop, you let the handle up halfway. So then you saw there, if I let it up too high, it will just shut the motor off. So you can just let this thing snap shut, or snap open, and it'll stop that motor very quickly. Um, sometimes what I like to do is I like to get it, I let kind of kind of kill itself off and then let it go the rest of the way. So I'll do that and it can kind of stop on its own and then you can let the brake go on it. Whatever. I just don't like letting things snap really hard when they're stopping a running engine. You know, things could break, things could crack, whatever. Anyway, that's how you go about it. Um, hope that helped somebody out who's trying to figure out how to go on all this stuff they do have um, adjusters height adjusters on these wheels you know if yeah, you can move them this way or that way and it moves the wheel up or down um, you know typically you don't have to move them around too much unless for some reason one of them is different than than one of the other ones and you go oh how'd that happen hit a tree or something or a shrub and it and it pulled it out and moved it or whatever but uh, anyway that should pretty much uh, cover the basics of uh, somebody who wants to get going on one of these things. So anyway, hit the like and subscribe there if you would please. It helps my channel uh, try and grow and um, maybe we can come up with a, a little bit more of uh, content for you. Alright, thanks. Bye.